Every data team at some point needs to make a decision on what tools they're going to use to build their data stack. And this is obviously most important when you're at the very beginning, but can also play a factor if you're looking to migrate to a new structure, a new data stack as well. And this is something that unfortunately has become more difficult over the years as more tools have become available. There are new opinions, new best practices to consider, all sorts of stuff that just makes this more of an overwhelming conversation. But at the same time, this is a very important decision that you don't want to take lightly because it's going to impact your effectiveness as a team, your ability to scale. And obviously, depending on the decision you make, the bottom line and the costs for your stack. So what I want to do in this video is share some considerations for how to navigate this decision a little bit easier and with some more clarity and ultimately land on the tools that are best for you. So number one we'll talk about here is what most people think about, which is money. And what I like to focus on here is not just the individual cost of a tool, so the pricing, but the total cost of ownership. And when you think about total cost of ownership, there's really two components of this, at least how I think about it. Number one is infrastructure. And by infrastructure, I'm talking about the actual cost of a tool. So what is the licensing cost? So a lot of times tools, especially cloud-based tools, will have licensing per user. So you'll pay X amount of dollars per month per user, or maybe get a group of them, something like that. So that's part of the infrastructure cost. The other could be usage. So a lot of tools, maybe they separate storage and compute, or they're just charging you for compute. What are the processing fees or the usage fees for a tool? And some are more expensive than the other. Some charge, if we're talking about ingestion tools, might charge based on volume, they might charge based on credits, things like that. When I say infrastructure, that's what we're talking about. And that's definitely the part that gets the most attention when we're thinking about tooling and considerations. But I would argue that even just within the total cost of ownership discussion, that's just one part and actually not the biggest part. Because the other aspect of total cost of ownership that I would recommend you consider is the human resources cost. And by that, the cost of paying humans, people to manage and maintain and build using the tools that you pick. And a lot of times this is going to end up being more of a cost factor than just the licensing and infrastructure alone. So for example, you might choose to go all self-hosted open source tools because you think you're going to save money on the licensing, which is true. And that in your eyes might say, all right, this is a less expensive tool. It's better for me. But a lot of times people overlook the fact that, that means your human resources costs are going to go way up because your people, or maybe it's you are going to have to spend way more time managing it, troubleshooting it, setting it up doing everything that otherwise would be handled through a payment of a uh, license or something like that. And the last I checked, people don't work for free. So this is something that's going to rack up costs in the total cost of ownership under the hood. And while we're not tracking it as clearly as maybe a licensing billing sequence, the cost of your people spending time managing and maintaining this self-hosted stack is actually going to end up costing you more in the long run because it's taking away time also from doing the more pressing things like creating reports, creating pipelines, really doing the whole analytics stuff. So that's something to consider. It's not to say that you should always pay for tools or that you should never do open source. It's totally dependent on your team on a lot of things, which we're going to talk about here, but a huge consideration has to be the total cost of ownership, which includes both infrastructure and the human resources. The next consideration is maintenance. And this is something that we've already talked about in the previous section, but it is so important that I wanted to give it its own little part here to talk about. And typically what we're talking about here, again, is how much time are you going to be required as a team, as an individual to manage what you're about to sign up for with this tooling. And to be even more clear, this typically comes down to the decision of, are you going to build or buy the tooling? And by build, we're talking self-host open source. By buy, we're talking about paying probably a SaaS type of product where you pay a licensing fee and have it all hosted for you. And I want to qualify this again by saying, I don't think there's a universal best answer for this, but in my experience and what I've noticed with a lot of teams, I often think that buying a tool versus trying to self-host and manage it yourself typically is going to be a better decision for a couple of reasons. Number one is whether or not data and what you're building as a data team is really a competitive advantage, or if you're using it primarily to get insights, to support a business, or is it a competitive advantage in the sense of the data infrastructure you're building is what actually gives you a leg up compared to your competition as a business. I think a lot of data teams were not the product. The data team is not the product. And it's hard to say that I'm a data engineer guy, but that's just the reality. We are supporting the business. We ourselves may not be the product or the reason the business product is differentiated in the market, but maybe that is true. Again, I'm not saying that's always the case, but I think a lot of times we get a little bit too caught up in trying to be cute with what we build and trying to make things really unique and custom because we can, and it's fun. And don't get me wrong. I, I agree with that. I love building 
custom things like that. But when you take a step back and think about it from the decision of a tooling selection from a company, unless you're really giving yourself a competitive advantage, I just think a lot of times it's not the best use of your time to be trying to build something custom all the time. I also recognize there are some shortcomings with tools, but again, we're talking considerations here. So when you're considering a tool, how much of a competitive advantage and how much of a difference are you making by going custom and trying to build and open source stuff versus just paying for somebody else to basically manage all that so you can work on building your pipeline and getting your analytics out the door. And I have another note on this topic, which might have fit better with the previous section, but I'll mention it here as well. But it relates to this idea of build versus buy and the costs associated with that time that it takes to do those things and the maintenance that we're talking about. And that has to do with comparing it to taxes. And this might seem a little bit weird, but let me just try to explain this. So if you compare this to a personal finance situation and you think about your own costs for a month, we typically think of expenses, right? So expenses are things that you're paying for, maybe you're going and you're, you're paying a bill for something, you have reoccurring subscriptions, things like that. Those are expenses. But if you go a little deeper, what you'll notice is the biggest expense you have is actually taxes most of the time. But the difference is, this is something that typically gets withheld, especially if you're working at a company, you'll have the taxes withheld from your paycheck. So we're talking income tax here. And every month and every paycheck, that's getting withheld. But you don't really notice it because it's getting withheld before it gets to you and you deal with it later. But that's in my eyes, again, I know this is a little bit of a weird example. It's comparing that to the cost of ownership of building and self-hosting something. You may not feel that every month because you're just uh, paying your employees a typical amount or you're paying yourself and it gets lumped in with everything else. You're not really thinking about it in the same way that you're thinking about getting a bill for a subscription or for paying for a tool. But a lot of times that cost, that hidden cost that you're paying your team to manage and maintain these things that you're trying to build custom is taking more away from your ability to give results. And again, it's just hidden below the surface, but it's actually the most expensive cost that you're incurring a lot of times. And again, I realize that might be a little bit of a weird example, but it's something that works for me. Maybe it was helpful for you, but it's something that I like to think about again when considering build versus buy. If this is truly a competitive advantage for you or you work at a really big tech savvy company, maybe custom building is the way to go. But a lot of us don't work in that type of situation. We're just working on a small, maybe a little micro data team or we're just by ourselves, And yet we still try to keep up and match what we see these big tech companies doing, which sometimes is just actually costing you more in the long run. So just keep that in mind. All right, and the last one here is expectations. And for expectations, I'm talking about the current and future situation of your data team. So one part here is the skill set of your team. We've already talked a lot about this. The tool you pick should align with what your current team skill sets are. And I think it's important to be very honest with yourself on what your team is capable of and also if it makes sense to allocate their time to do certain things compared to maybe in the future, do you want to hire certain people to manage certain types of infrastructure because maybe you want to pick certain tools, but you don't have the skills right now. That means you're going to hire somebody to do it. And what are the implications of that? Another big factor to this is the vendors. So maybe you're currently a full Microsoft shop or all Google that can play heavily into which tools you pick. For example, if you're all Microsoft, you probably aren't going to pick BigQuery or a Google database. You would likely want to keep that the same. It's just something that it's going to make your life easier. Billing will be easier. Management will be easier. You don't want to be flip-flopping around too much if you don't have to. But at the same time, maybe you're planning to change vendors or maybe you want to be vendor agnostic and pick certain tools that way. Those are typically going to be strategic decisions. Where do you see yourself now versus in the future? But in terms of the data tooling and the selecting the tools, it's a big consideration to keep in mind. And the last point I have here is source systems. And by this, it's mostly focused on data ingestion and how you're going to extract and load the data to your central landing zone, whatever that may be. And the reason this is a consideration is because some tools may not have the ability to connect to certain systems and some do it better than others. Some have better performance. And these are things you want to evaluate, particularly with the, again, data ingestion piece. And this can tend to blur into the area of, do you need to custom build something to have your own custom connector? Or do you want to just try to handle 90% with one tool and then either custom build or pay another company that handles those extra kind of custom edge case connectors to do the rest of them for you. Really what you want to do is make sure you can get the most important data sources in with whatever tool you pick and the rest of it, you, you're going to always have work to do, but what's going to drive the biggest impact and make sure you're covering that uh, with whatever tool you pick. So to bring it all home here, at the end of the day, picking a data stack is very personal to an individual data team and your circumstances. But if I had to give general advice on this, I would say 
start with a simple stack, a bare minimum lean amount of tooling as you get started and only add on as you see fit. There's a lot of tools have a lot of functionality that you can use out of the box that might not be perfect, but it will be enough to get the job done. And only once you feel that you have outlived the capabilities of a particular function of a tool to go look for something else. And the main reason I say this is because once you've added a tool, it becomes very difficult to move away from it, to take it away. But if you start slow and prove the worth that you need it, then you'll feel a lot better about adding it in and you won't feel like you've made a mistake or that you've overcomplicated things too soon because you'll have gone through that process. But no matter what, picking data tools is foundational to any data stack, everybody has to do it. And hopefully now you have some better ideas on how to navigate this process. So as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you at the next video.